Hello and welcome, JBA fans. Today I am joined once again by the wonderful Money Guy nine five five nine. What's up, my dollar bills? Indeed, that is his intro. And today we're going to be bringing you the JBA Generation Six send off power rankings. Oh boy! Now, obviously, um, this is going to be very factual, and you know, we're just going by the draft. We're not actually going by the player. We're more going on how balanced is their draft, and like, is it versatile? Just all things considered, is it a good draft that they can potentially do well with? So we're actually going to go um, from, in our opinion, in our opinion, the worst draft to the best draft. Again, this is all our opinion. You may disagree, and that's okay. Anyways, let's get right into it. Coming in at number twelve, we have um, the Washington Whiskash. Now, this is your team. Uh, yes, it is. <laughs> now, obviously, we don't want to rate ourselves as the top, but there's a very specific reason why he is at the bottom. So, Jirachi, as we know, is a fantastic Pokemon. Iron Head, you know, that's all you really need. However, his team does have some glaring weaknesses, such as the double four times weakness to Ice from the Gliscor and the Torterra, as well as um, General being weak against opposing Volturn, like, he doesn't really have anything for the coverage, or, um, he doesn't really have anything to switch into any threats. Like, his team is not that bulky, his walls being Tentacruel, Gliscor, and Dusknor, I guess. Those Pokemon, most of them do not have any reliable recovery, Gliscor being the only exception. Now, uh, Kyurem Black, while it is a very powerful Pokemon, it is weak to Stealth Rocks, and with his team composition, it's more aimed towards the Volt Turn style, which means he's just going to be taking even more Rocks damage. And with only Tentacruel and Hitmonchan as his reliable uh, hazard removal, uh, Gliscor can defog, but it generally wants the Poison Heal, and you can't have defog plus Poison Heal. It's illegal. Uh, just spinning, if his opponent has a uh, bulky ghost type, like for example, um, Gorgeist, uh, that would completely wall both of them, and he would just not be able to get a spin off, and his team would just get whittled away by hazards. You have anything you want to say about your own team? Um, yeah, so, you know, looking back on it, I do realize that my threats do get. Your, your, your mic is like hazards. your mic is really interesting right now. You're kind of underwater. Quite oh, interesting. All right, it's fine now. Okay, so my threats, my hazards, which could be a very long problem in the long run. And so, honestly, my only good one is Jirachi, but. That versatility could be taken away if I have to run rocks a lot of the times. Yeah, that's another thing. He doesn't have too many reliable rockers, aside from Torteria. Torterra, obviously the best stealth rocker in League. And his fastest Pokemon being Megalopony, of course, is not actually that strong. It gets walled by a lot of things, and while its coverage is pretty much unresisted in the game, has unresisted stab thanks to Scrappy. There are Pokemon like Cofagragus that can get rid of that ability, and there's also Protect. Now Protect is a move where if you go for high jump kick, you're you're gonna lose 50% of your health. And that's another drawback of using Megalopony. It's just you always have to rely on luck, which is not a very good thing. Is that all for this team? Uh, yes, so now we'll be moving on to number 11. So number 11 is actually is my team, the... and um, there's a very good reason why. So my team, it does have some pretty strong threats, but um, I don't really have too many dragon resists. My only fairy type is Azumarill, which is not famed for its defensive capabilities, and Excadrill, which is 
Exodrill also resists Dragon, is what I mean by that, and Exodrill is not the bulkiest Pokemon in the game. Like, for example, a Latios, Life Orb, Psy Shock, two it KOs, Azumarill, I'm pretty sure. If not, it gets very close, or like after Rocks or something like that. And Surf, completely Oko's Excadrill, and from that point it can just kind of tear through my team. It's not really a very good time versus Dragon types. And while I do have the Mega Pidgeot, its move pool is very limited. I think it only has like three good moves. <laughs> Hurricane, Heat Wave, and U-Turn. Like, it doesn't even have four move slot syndrome, and it has three move slot syndrome. So yeah, my defensive core is Celebi, Miltank, Weezing. And like, Celebi is four times weak to the bug moves, and while Weezing does resist that, it's not the most um, offensive Pokemon, so it can be prone to setup, for example, and my team doesn't really have too much to uh, deal with setup Pokemon. Azumarill is my only priority, and usually one Akaja is not going to be enough to take down a threat. You have anything to say about that? Um, yeah, also, your team is pretty weak to hazards, considering that uh, even though Exodrill is a pretty reliable spinner, it can get whittled down by a mon that has Rocky Helmet. And as we've seen before in the past, uh, if you die to a Rocky Helmet while using Rapid Spin, your Rapid Spin does not go off, and so the hazards stay up, which could really threaten mons like Kiram and Mega Pidgeot. Yes, the hazard damage is never appreciated, especially with my Mega Pokemon weak to it. Anyways, I think that's pretty much all for this team. Uh, moving on, for the next, uh, this is coming in at number 10, I believe, yeah, is the Columbus yes. Cresselia. Now, um, this team does have some pretty strong Pokemon, but it's a pretty slow team overall. Like, his only fast Pokemon don't hit very hard, which is not ideal. He has Jolteon, which, I mean, I admit that is a very fast Pokemon, but with the 110 special attack, it's not that strong. And the Volt Switches and the U-Turns are not going to be doing too much damage in combination, coming off of the smaller attack stat and special attack stat. So he's really forced to run Choice Scarf on at least one of these three Pokemon you see on the screen, probably not on Chansey. And speaking about Chansey, it is the definition of setup fodder and uh, his team doesn't really have too much to deal with setup Pokemon. Like, for example, uh, Volcarona. What does he have for a plus one Volcarona? Maybe he has Scarf uh, Landorus, but like that gets uh, killed with a F Life Orb Fire Blast at plus one, so he can't really even revenge that. So, overall, I don't know about his team. It's not too great, but it's not too bad either. I mean, Chansey can wall a lot. He also has Avalug which has very high physical defense, but both of them do not do a lot of damage, so he's very very prone to set up Pokemon. You have anything you want to say? Um, his hazard removal would be his two spinners in Blastoise and Avalug, but unfortunately Avalug, since it is Ice-type, is weak to rocks, which means getting off a, a rapid spin could be difficult. Ah oh, yes, and also Mega Blastoise has no recovery whatsoever. Just thought I'd point that out. So, like, getting the spin off consistently is going to be very difficult. And his Firewater Grass Core, if you can even call it that, includes a Roselia, which is not a very good Pokemon. I mean, I, I just can't get behind that. If you want a Poison Grass type, use Roserade. It's much better. So anyways, moving on to the next one, coming in at number 9, is uh, Dougie and the po the New York Pokemon Rangers. Now, his team does have some offensive threats, such as Weavile, Keldeo, and um, Togekiss can also be quite an issue. Very good Pokemon, Togekiss. Very good with the Choice Scarf, obviously. Anyways, Weavile can be walled by, say, opposing Keldeos. Uh, Keldeo can get uh, walled by any bulky grass type, 
bulky water type, it just can't do much to break those Pokemon. I mean, sure it is a strong Pokemon, but it is weak to flying, and he doesn't really have the best flying resists in the world. He does have Mega Steelix and Gigalith, but those can be easily taken advantage of by strong water type attacks, which, again, he doesn't have a very good answer to it. So overall, the combination of offensive threats is just going to cause a lot of trouble for him. And while Mew can serve as a defensive Pokemon to kind of take on those things, it's basically forced to run Culperberry because Knockoff is so prevalent in the meta. And losing that potential item slot is very big for a Pokemon such as Mew that is versatile. It really doesn't want to be uh, held down by having to run an item. Um, I wanted to say as well that Haxorus, being a very powerful dragon type, has a, a base speed of just below under 100, which makes it so that choice scarfers that are base 100 can outspeed and revenge it, even if it gets a dragon dance up. Yeah, that's something that can really, uh, like cut a sweep very short if you get like one kill and then they revenge kill you with a say scarf celebi you know the threat and yeah the base speed kind of holds it back as well as its bulk and uh, he actually drafted the wrong venusaur he actually got regular venusaur instead of mega <laughs> hilarious and he also has um pyroar which is an excellent mimikyu counter but this is not Gen 7, so it kind of uses, it kind of loses that viability, and it's not really that good of a Pokemon in my opinion. So while his draft is pretty decent in some ways, it's not the greatest, so that's why he's ranked only number 9. Was it 9? I think so. Anyways, you want to move on to the next one, and that is the Soviet Slowkings. Coming in at, I believe, number 8, I may have lost track already. But the Soviet, Soviet Slow Kings, they do have the uh, wall. I believe you can probably see it on your screen if you squint and like, you know, look very carefully. You might be able to see the Licky Licky. Now this Pokemon is quite fat and it basically walls 90% of the metagame, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, and that in uh, combination... I think you're correct with this in combination with, say, a Helmet Chomp or a defensive Sylveon, nothing is breaking through that core. Now, while he does have that amazing core, he doesn't have too much offense for his team. Like, he does have the option of offensive Garchomp, offensive Sylveon, offensive Licky Licky with Belly Drum, you know? But generally, they're not too common, and he does have to give up part of his wall core to be able to do that. He does have Bisharp, which has the four times weakness to fighting, it's weak to ground, and he doesn't have the best ground resists. Like for example, Excadrill uh, completely tears his team apart with the Earthquake with the Mold Breaker, gets rid of his own new resist, which is the Levitating Rotom Heat, which is not taking a Mold Breaker Earthquake whatsoever. So overall, his team is not too bad, but it's not amazing either, which is why he's ranked so low. You want to say anything about that? Um, yeah, so I think one thing that holds his team back a little bit is Mega Bayonet because all it can really do is get off the Will-O-Wisp and Destiny Bond. Like, it may have a very high attack stat, but its coverage is not the best to be able to use it. Yeah, its next highest stat is the special attack, which is completely useless. He does have the Armaldo, Armaldo to get rid of the hazards, but I'm pretty sure that doesn't really count as reliable hazard recover, hazard removal. And while Hitmontop is slightly better at it, it can be like completely walled by ghost types. Like. A, as long as knockoff is not doing over 50% and they have reliable recovery, you're never going to get a spin-off. It's just not going to happen. And with the team kind of weak to hazards, like spikes, for example, just completely destroy him. 
I think that can be a major downside to his draft. Although, Licky Licky, excellent choice. Great Pokemon. Moving on, we're going to go on to the uh, Arizona Diancy backs. Now, this is the part of the list where the teams start to get uh, even better and better, and it, it even starts to seem decent at times. So, uh, Matt did draft a pretty amazing Firewater Grass Core in Mega Venusaur, Rotom Wash, and Entei. He also has a very offensive powerhouse with Terrakion, and overall his team has a lot of power, pretty decent defensive synergy, although he does have a few questionable things, like for example, Bear Tick. Really? I mean, it's Matt, so it's never going to be a well-played Bear Tick, so like, what's the point of even having it, honestly? It's basically a useless pick. Yeah. If you wanted something useful, you could probably ditch that and maybe even free agent Chatot, which surprisingly went undrafted. Now Chatot is a very, very good Pokemon, especially on his draft because it gives him another ground resist, and Chatter is a very good move. It's basically a Confuse Ray that does damage, and I think his team could really appreciate that. Because at the moment, he only has two ground resists, which is Rotom Wash and Crobat, both of which aren't the best ground resist. Anyways, his draft is pretty good. He does have the Espeon, which can kind of deter hazards, although most hazard setters can do a lot of damage to Espeon, unless it's like max defensive, in which case it can't do much damage. And yeah, Crobat being a very fast Pokemon, it gives the team a lot of speed. However, Crobat is not the bulkiest thing in the world, and it's also not the strongest thing in the world. I mean, it's not weak, but it's not amazing. So that's why his team is here and not any higher. Do you have anything you want to say about that? Um. Yeah, so honestly, I think Lipart was a pretty, pretty good pickup because it gives him a nice T-waiver to be able for his bigger threats to outspeed things that are faster than him. Yes, Thunder Wave is one of the best moves in the game, and he does have quite a few users of the move. For example, Rotom Wash gets it, I believe Aromatus, no it doesn't get it, never mind. Uh, <laughs> but also the Lipart has the Prankster Thunder Wave, which is amazing. You can basically cripple a Pokemon before they even move, it's really a phenomenal thing. Anyways, we're going to move on to the next one on our list, which is going to be the FC Bairn Metagross. Now this team has pretty good offensive synergy with the Latios plus Infernape, and overall there's very little in the game that walls both of them, and um, it's just a very solid core. He does have the U-turn to get in his Latios safely, and he can just kind of toss Dracos out there, and whenever he needs to take a hit, Porygon 2 is always there, and generally that's going to be a very good uh, thing to have in the back. He also has Breloom, which can actually completely one-hit KO hip out on if you get three hits on Bullet Seed with a Choice Band, as we know. He does have a few flaws to his draft though, which is why he isn't higher up on the list. For example, Raichu is not really serving any purpose when he already has Galvantula as a electric type. He has a Scyther, which is four times weak to rocks, pretty much adding on to the rocks weakness that he already has with regular Altaria. That's before it megas, it has to come in on rocks, Galvantula. Infernape does not like taking rocks damage because it wants all the life orb hits it can get. Uh, Breloom can break its Focus Sash, he's just weak to hazards in general, although that's most teams. The Probopass is, it has many 4 times weaknesses, which makes it not too good of a Pokemon, in my opinion. And while he does have the Vaporeon to, like, tank hits, Vaporeon is, like, actually, Vaporeon is pretty decent, not gonna lie. You have anything you want to say about his draft? Um, yeah, so, as you see, he has... Uh, a Galvantula, which, as we know, sets up those sticky webs f so it can slow down things for his slower things to hit things real hard. And while sticky webs are pretty good 
He does not have a ghost type to block out rapid spins. You're underwater again. Mike is mac your mic is uh, messing up. Quite unfortunate. Quite unfortunate. It seems fine now. Alright, so what I was saying is that he does not have a ghost type to be able to block a rapid spinner to keep his webs up. That is true. And does he have anything that benefits from defog? I don't see anything with defiant or competitive or any of those abilities. Yeah, and his, uh, his only hazard removal of his own is Latios, which is going to get rid of the webs for him. It's just not the best in terms of hazards, but I think it's a pretty solid team nonetheless because of the offensive coverage that he has, along with the sticky webs if he keeps them up. Mega Altaria can be a huge threat, outspeeding most things. Anyways, moving on to the Westchester Weaviles. Now, uh, Megazard X is a very big threat in League, and uh, Dragon Dance can literally 6 0 some teams. Cresselia is yet another Pokemon that can just 6 0 some teams. And Needle King is one of those Pokemon that has such good coverage that it's very hard to switch into. He does also have the pretty decent defensive core of Mandibuzz plus Lantern plus Fortress. And between those three, I think he has a resist for almost every type. And that's pretty good. Uh, one problem that I see in his draft is the existence of Noivern. Why? I mean, no Noivern is not a very good Pokemon in my opinion, and while it is a dragon type, you already have one of the best dragons in the game, Mega Charizard X. Do you really need more? Like, honestly. He also has Verizion, which while it is fast, is historically known for being bad. I don't know about his draft. I think his uh, offensive powerhouses kind of make up for his lacks in other areas. And he does have the Volbeat, which can potentially pass a Tail Glow into, uh, say, Nido King, and there are no switchins. You want to talk about his draft for a little bit? Um, yeah, so I used Mega Charizard X last season, and while it's a very good mon, before it Mega Evolves, it is four times weak to Stealth Rocks. And from what I see from his team, he has a decent spinner and fortress but if the rocks are if rocks are set up then it can break it sturdy and then amon could come in and just kill it and essentially making his hazard removal options gone which could leave charizard x in a very dangerous spot to sweep a team Yeah, I think his team is pretty decent. I mean, it's pretty good. Lantern being especially versatile because you basically get to choose what you're immune to based on the matchup, which is really solid. And Mamoswine has the ability to completely destroy most offensive teams. And Azelf giving a nice speed tier along with Noivern. Very nice team in my opinion. And it only gets better from here. So moving on, we have the Seviper... Uh, 04. This is by uh, Toulon, and even though he drafted with almost exclusively a random number generator, or a random uh, thing that picks something from a list, I don't know what you want to call that, but he actually ended up with a very solid team. He has one of the best Megas, it's actually banned from OU nowadays, um, Mega Sableye. You know, this Pokemon has a lot of immunities, being immune to normal fighting and, uh, um, what's the other one? Psychic. That's it. And only one weakness, which makes it a very solid Pokemon. And he also got Tangrowth, which is very versatile with the Regenerator ability. It can run Rocky Helmet, Assault Vest, and it can basically switch in on a lot of things. It can also run Sludge Bomb to check the fairy types that Mega Sableye is weak to. And my favorite thing about his draft is the fact that he has Jellicent. Now this is a wonderful two-for-one deal because uh, with that one draft pick he can have a blue Jellicent 
or a pink cello scent. I mean, does it get any more versatile than that? I didn't think so. You want to say anything? Um, I'd like to point out the fact that he does indeed have a mask ring, which is could be very useful in quiver dancing up and baton passing into a thunder staring in, for example, and getting off some powerful thunderbolts. Uh, yes, like first Leo, uh, mask green put in the finest of work. Didn't get any kills, but it allowed Latios to get four, I believe, and just completely destroy him. So baton pass is a wonderful thing for his team, especially with Thunder's T being very strong. Go on. Uh, yeah. So, is that uh, all? Yeah, that's all. Alright, so his team does have a lot of priority options. You can have the Sucker Punch from Seviper, I'm pretty sure it gets that. The Shadow Sneak from Bayonet. The Shadow Sneak from Mega Sableye, potentially. The Fake Out uh, Bullet Punch combination from his Metacham. He has lots of things going for him, and um, Ghost being a very excellent offensive typing, the fact that he has three Ghost types, no, four Ghost types, is not even a bad thing, because um, say he uses will o spam with Jellicent and Sableye, and then later on he's like, you know what, I'm going to send in my Gengar and I'm going to hex everything. Nothing is going to survive that, I'll let you know right this minute. Gengar is a very strong Pokemon, and with Hex, it basically has the same power as a high jump kick from Mega Metacham. It's the same base power move, and we know how powerful Mega Metacham is. So overall, very solid draft. He also has the speed boost option from Sharpedo, basically a better Scolipede. And he also has Seviper, which is also a better Scolipede, at least on design. And yeah, I think it's a very solid team. And moving on to the next one, which is the West Virginia Wingles. Now this team uh, has the Scolipede, which is one of the best Pokemon in the game. I believe at the beginning of Season 2, it was very comfortably in the number one spot for MVP, although it kind of slowed down in kills later on in the season and became more like spike setting. Or did he use it for spikes? I think he just used it for baton passing and that sort of thing. But anyways, Mega Gardevoir also a huge threat. Uh, excuse me. Mega Gardevoir, especially with a speed boost baton pass from uh, Scolipede plus maybe an iron defense makes it perfect at dealing with any team because Mega Gardevoir's like main weaknesses are its defense and its speed not being too great and once you patch up those weaknesses you have an unstoppable Pokemon. Now one other thing that benefits from the speed pass is Tyranitar, and as we know from Cole, a very good core is um, Scolipede and pass into a Life Orb Tyranitar. Now he tells us it would have 6 0 unless he misplayed. Well, he did misplay, and if he didn't, he would have 6 0 with the Tyranitar. But like, can you really expect anything out of good players? Anyways, moving back to the topic at hand, uh, he also has Zygarde. While it does have the four times weakness to ice, it is a very solid Pokemon. And um, it does have access to Coil, Dragon Dance, it has many setup options. And it's just a very solid Pokemon in general. It can always take at least one hit from anything, which I think is very valuable. He also has the Pachirisu, which actually won VGC Worlds that one time. Uh, so overall, Pachirisu is a very good Pokemon. It only has one weakness, which is ground. Give it an air balloon, it's basically unstoppable. It can wall, I think, 77% of the metagame, if my calculations are correct. I don't know about the exact number, but I think it's around 77%. Anyways, he does have the Skarmory, which can wall a lot of Pokemon. He has a Dusclops, which can actually wall a lot of Pokemon with the Eviolite and the massive defenses. He also has the Perugly and the, um, what else does he have? Perugly and Dusclops, right? The combination to basically keep up his hazards because if they're going for a rapid spin, just switch into, Dus into Dusclops and wall them and block the spin at the same time. If they're going for Defog, you go into Perugly with a Defiant 
and it's basically a better bisharp at that point because it's faster. And um, Progly also gives you a fast U-turn mod, which can help get Mega Gardevoir in safely. And overall, it's just a very solid draft. I think it's going to do very well in the send-off season. Now moving on to uh, Tom and the Vancouver Kyogres. Now this team looking very solid in the offensive uh, field with one of the most offensive uh, powerhouses, Mega Pokemon. That, that made a lot of sense, but you know what I'm trying to say. Mega Absol. Uh, Mega Absol actually completely six owes money. Yeah. Isn't that right? It is. I unfortunately don't have that many great dark resists on my team. And all of them get hit by play rough coverage and anything that might be able to take a knockoff pretty well, like Torterra and Gliscor are both weak to the Ice Beam, and Mega Absol is a Pokemon that can actually run mixed coverage pretty decently. Now one of Mega Absol's weakest points is its speed before Mega Ing and its bulk. Now that is completely patched up by the next two Pokemon on his team, Klefki, which can sped, spread paralysis, and you know, that is a key to victory, as they say. And uh, he also has Latias, which uh, say Mega Absol takes a resisted Sucker Punch, 90% lives on 10. What you can do is Healing Wish back into your Mega Absol and then take another Sucker Punch. I know it's pretty crazy, but you can actually do it. Now, that being said, Latias is not only useful for healing wishes, it's also a very solid Pokemon in general. It can sweep teams by itself with Calm Mind. It can uh, defog very safely, just in case Stealth Heart goes up, although it shouldn't with the Magic Bounce. But anyways, um, moving on to the rest of his team, he also has Tornadus T, which actually wins the game 70% of the time on its own. Now, other Pokemon that he has includes Garbodor, which can set up Spikes and T-Spikes, which are very good. He has Dawnfan, which can spin away hazards while keeping up his own. He has Rotom Freeze, which is a very interesting Pokemon because it gets Stab Bolt Beam, which is very, very good offensively. He also has Spiritomb to um, trap Psychic types and do a lot of damage. He has Shaman and Milotic as his last two members and also Flareon, which I didn't mention earlier. Flareon is an excellent wall breaker with the Guts, Toxic Orb, Flare Blitz. It's hitting very hard. I think it's almost hitting as hard as Darmanitan at that point, which is just crazy to think about. And while it is a little bit slower, it you're not using it as a fast Pokemon, you're using it to wall break, and it can outspeed most walls, which is the important thing. Shaman, being an excellent versatile grass type, can really tank hits from anything, and Leech Seed or Seed Flare or Dazzling Gleam, there's so many options with that thing, and Milotic just being an excellent a defensive backbone to fall back on. Do you have anything you want to say about his draft? Uh, yeah, I just like to say that I love that he has a great form of keeping hazards away with his Dawn Fan and then the Mega Absol with the Magic Bounce. And he has a lot of hazards of his own to stack onto his opponents, which could, could be a great advantage for his Mega Absol to clean up late game. Yes, and also another thing to note is that he does have basically a Dragon Fairy Steel Core in only two Pokemon, which is an excellent bargain. Klefki plus Latias, amazing core. Now I believe that brings us to our number one draft. And... <laughs> well... I must explain, I couldn't find uh, Cole's um, logo, so I just made my own. I think it's pretty solid. Anyways, we're not going to focus on that, we're going to focus on the draft. Now because Cole was the last pick, he did get a wheel, which means he got to pick two Pokemon at a time, which means he can form some really nice cores. So he has the Mega Scizor, which is a huge threat. Probably the best Mega in Oras OU, and its only weakness being Fire, easily patched up by Manaphy, his next pick. And Manaphy is one of the greatest Pokemon in Draft League because of its sweeping capabilities and the fact that it gets coverage for literally anything. 
So, both very solid Pokemon. He also has Clefable, which, if he doesn't run Stealth Rocks on it, might have the potential to Calm Mind Sweep. And it can definitely probably do better than what Money did last season, which was like 1 and 10, something like that. What kill death ratio did Clef have? Something awful. I think it was 110. Yeah, something I'm like really that. hoping <laughs> to see Cole use it to a better to a better vision than I had for it. Yeah. Anyways, he also has the Reuniclus, which is uh, regarded by many as one of the best psychic types in League format. It has so many options that it can use. It can use Acid Armor, Calm Mind, Regenerator, Magic Guard, Specs, uh, Trick Room, Life Orb, Magic Guard, pretty good. Very versatile Pokemon. He also has the Arcanine, which has the Flash Fire, which can take uh, fire attacks aimed at Scizor, and it can also take Grass-type moves aimed at Manaphy. And you might be thinking, well, does he even have an Electric Resist? And uh, he does. He has many of those. He has Nido Queen, one of the best Electric checks in the game, Rotom Cut, which is also pretty good versus opposing Electric types, and has a very strong Leaf Storm. And he also has um, Flygon, which is obviously immune to the Electric moves, although it is weak to HP Ice which most electric types run, uh, if they're choice specs or choice scarf, which electric types often are, they do have to predict that correctly. And he does have the biggest threat, Murkrow. Now, you might be you know, a little skeptical about that, but Murkrow is an excellent Pokemon. It has Eevee Light, has the priority Feather Dance to uh, completely wall physical attackers. It can have the... Uh, What's the combination? Parish Song plus Mean Look. So you trap them and then you Parish Song until they die. Very solid Pokemon. And um, he also has a Machoke. And another EV Light user, potentially, can be quite bulky. And it also has a wonderful uh, move called Dynamic Punch. And thanks to its ability No Guard, it always hits, which is very good versus teams. Um, with no ghost type because you can always confuse something and then they're never attacking for the rest of the game. You want to say anything? Um, yeah, I just like to point out the fact that Cole very, very carefully planned out the fact that he has many Thunder Wave users and that's a very <laughs> good thing as we know since it is indeed the best move in the game. Indeed. So one other thing that he drafted as his 10th pick, actually, which is his last one, because he did franchise, is actually Ursaring. Now, Ursaring is a very interesting Pokemon. You can use Guts Toxic Orb, you can use Quick Feet Toxic Orb, and get the Facade. Very, very good wall breaker, and with the um, Quick Feet, it can actually outspeed most things. And coming off of the huge attack stat and the boosted facade, it's very hard to switch into. So he also has Flygon, which completely 6 0s money. And I think that's an amazing thing to have on your draft. It can also defog yeah, I would have very to reliably. So get the hazards out of the way. And these are the reasons why we think uh, Cole did draft the best team in the league and I think that concludes our list do you want to say anything else to the people before we leave um, I just want you to know that even though uh, my draft is considered the worst in these power rankings I'm gonna try my best with what I have yeah same like uh, last season Jade ranked me as like the fifth worst or something like that maybe fourth worst and um, that gave me a lot of motivation to go out there and, you know, beat everyone except for two people. <laughs> and hopefully that'll be the same this season. And yeah, I think that'll be all for today, and I'll see you guys next time. And I will be uploading the games for the send-off, so be on the lookout for those videos. So yeah.